Started. Hello everyone, my name is Jungle Jamie and welcome to Hawk Mountain's Sanctuary Storytime. Today's program is Fidget's Folly and we are so happy that you are here joining us today. If you're happy too, then shake your tail feathers. Woo! At Hawk Mountain, we love nature. We love the birds, especially the raptors. We love the plants, all wildlife, the mountains, the sky, because we know that all living things are connected. If you love nature too, then get up and move around like your favorite animal. All right. Welcome everyone. We are so glad that you are joining us today for Sanctuary Storytime. And joining us today from Hawk Mountain, we have some special guests, Riley and Andrea, who are going to read us our story and show us a really cool craft. Hey Riley, what are we gonna be learning about today for Sanctuary Storytime? Hi Jamie. So we're so excited that you're all joining us today to learn more about peregrine falcons. First, we're going to talk about what makes peregrine falcons so special. And then we're going to read our awesome book today called Fidget's Folly. You can see right here. And then I'm going to hand it off to Andrea here, who is going to show you how to make an awesome peregrine falcon craft um, with just a few simple steps. So um, just a heads up, this program is being recorded. So if you wanna go back and watch this video later, um, you can head to Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel and watch the video as many times as you'd like. All right, so I'm going to replace Andrea with our Peregrine Falcon. Woohoo! So here is a Peregrine Falcon. And in our story today, Fidget's Folly, we're going to be learning about peregrine falcons. So peregrine falcons are falcons, which are birds of prey, they're raptors. And birds of prey are known for hunting for their food. So they have a couple special characteristics that they use to help them hunt. They have the really sharp hook-shaped beak. They have incredible eyesight and I'll turn my screen down so you can see those really sharp talons. And they use that sharp beak like a fork and knife to tear apart the flesh of the animals that they're eating. They use that sharp, keen eyesight to hunt for birds and search the sky for places to eat. And they use their sharp talons to grab and squeeze their food. So these are some pretty impressive birds. Another thing are these birds are built to fly fast. And you may know this, but peregrine falcons are the fastest animal in the entire world, in the land and the sea. And they can dive through the sky up to 240 miles per hour, which is very, very fast. I'm actually gonna share my screen and show you a video of a peregrine falcon diving through the air. So we'll take a second to get set up here. All right. So here you can see the peregrine falcon setting up to dive through the air. So they kind of circle and move their wings around a little bit. And then once they're in position, they kind of hold their wings in and hold their tail nice and tight. You'll see it in just a minute. 
they're looking for some pigeons flying and oh my goodness, look how fast that peregrine falcon dives through the air. And they have their eyes set on um, some tiny birds that they're going to catch for their tasty meal. Look at that. So let's see if the bird is successful. And bam, there you go. So the peregrine falcon has incredible skills and they are known for being fast, that is for sure. So I have my peregrine falcon here, but I also have a silhouette of a falcon. So you can see they have really sharp pointy wings and a really long tail. And that's what they use to kind of pull into their body and dive down through the sky really fast. So they're built for speed. All of their um, different body parts help them work together to um, hunt for food. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in our story today. I'm gonna scooch over our falcon and we'll get into the story. So another thing before we begin, is these peregrine falcons actually used to be endangered. Um, that means that their populations were kind of um, getting lower and lower and humans discovered that this certain chemical called DDT, which we'll talk about in our story today, was actually hurting these birds and their eggs. So now that we knew that this chemical was harmful, we banned it and the peregrine falcons now live all over the world and their populations are thriving, which is so exciting. Um, peregrine falcons can live in a variety of different places around the world. They can live in deserts, they live um, in the mountains, they can even live near um, the ocean. Um, so they can live in a bunch of different places. They can even live near the cities. Um, and their favorite place to live is they'll usually lay their eggs on the side of a cliff. Um, and they're not like normal birds where they build up a nest. Um, they'll usually just lay their eggs right on the side of the cliff in a little ledge, or they might borrow the nest of another bird, um, depending on what they can find. So that's kind of unique about the peregrine falcon. Um, one more thing is peregrine falcons are actually a bird that you can see here at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. So right now we're in our fall migration and these birds are most likely to be seen in the month of October. Um, I know that they just saw a few yesterday flying over the mountain, but they're um, most likely to be migrating during the month of October. So if you want to come to Hawk Mountain and bring your binoculars, maybe you'll be able to see a peregrine falcon. Um, so these birds are residents to Pennsylvania, so you could definitely see some living around here even year round. Some do migrate down south, like um, I was just saying, but others do like to live in Pennsylvania all throughout the year. All right, so now that you guys have learned a little bit of information about the peregrine falcon, we are going to get into our story, The Fidget's Folly. And I'll be sure to um, stop at each page so you can see the amazing illustrations. So the words are by Stacy Peterson. And the illustrations are by Vadim Gorbatov. All right. So there's a little bit of before to our story, which I'll read to you now. So. Before, not long ago, a man and a woman stood at the bottom of a cliff. Sweat poured down their faces as they pointed their binoculars towards a box nestled into a cliff. They were watching two young peregrine falcons that were living in the box. These attendants had placed them there and their job was to care for the birds. The peregrines needed help from the humans. Their species was endangered because of a chemical called DDT that was used to kill insects. But small birds ate the insects and peregrines ate the small birds. DDT made the shells of the falcon's eggs become thin to the point that the eggs were crushed when the mother birds tried to incubate them. 
and incubate them means to sit on them to keep them warm to help the eggs hatch. Um, but when the moms were trying to sit on these eggs, the shells were really brittle and easy to break. So the eggs would break before the babies could be born. In just a few short years, the peregrines were all but gone from their historical nesting sites in North America. But the people who loved peregrine falcons wanted to save them. First, they helped ban the use of DDT. Then they bred baby birds in incubators so that the eggshells would not break. When the birds were five weeks old, their caretakers placed them in hack boxes and left food for the birds until they learned to fly and hunt on their own. No one had ever done this before, but this, these pioneers were determined to help the falcons. In the box, one of the birds that the humans had named Fidget had learned how to fly and escape from predators. She had passed the first test in becoming an independent falcon. But the next test was to come. Would she be able to learn how to hunt on her own? Fidget nestled into the corner of her box. Her tummy was warm and full of quail. She was not thinking about hunting. Instead, her attention was focused on her brother. All right, so we're gonna meet Fidget and her brother. All right. Finally, Fidget fluffed her feathers and her brother walked to the ledge overlooking the valley, mountains, and trees. Finally, Echo was going to fly. Fidget remained in her spot at the back of the box. She watched him closely as he took a cautious peek. Fidget was already full of herself. The young peregrine falcon had already flown from the ledge to her favorite branch. Except for a close call with the hunting golden eagle, she had frolicked on her windy playground. The lively currents took her up and down and all around. So you can see Fidget and her brother Echo. And they're overlooking the mountain on their little cliff. Echo's feet clung to the ledge. He lifted his wings and flapped cautiously as his feathers ruffled in the wind. Fidget sleeked her feathers down tightly against her body. She couldn't wait to join Echo on the breeze. So there's Echo spreading his wings. He's about to leave. And there's Fidget standing in the back waiting to join him. All right. Echo glanced back towards Fidget. He tightened his grip, but Fidget was impatient for Echo to fly. She charged and pushed him off the ledge. So there's Fidget pushing her brother Echo. Oh boy, what's gonna happen? Echo spiraled and somersaulted through the air. Key, 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 echoed back to Fidget from below. Fidget was flabbergasted. This was not like when she played on the currents. She leaned her head far over the ledge to see where Echo would go. So there's Echo flying through the air. And there's Fidget watching overhead. All right. Let's see what happens to Echo. Finally, Echo stopped tumbling and spread his wings. He spotted a rocky shelf on the cliff and flapped towards it, landing on his belly. He slowly stood and peered up the wall. His eyes met hers for a second, then he turned away. Fidget felt relieved, somewhat. She was glad that he was okay, but that was not how it was supposed to be. Peregrines were masters of the sky. What happened to her brother? So there's Echo falling on his belly, but he is safe. He found a spot on the ledge and he's looking up at his sister, Fidget, in her box. Okay. Fidget lifted her head and scanned the valley. 
There were lots of interesting little birds to watch. She would think about Echo later. Fidget focused. One bird stood out from the rest. It was flying awkwardly. Fidget's eyes remained on it as a thought flamed inside her mind, but then quickly flickered out. The sun hung low in the sky. It gently set over the hills and bathed the valley in purple, crimson, and gold. Fidget yawned and puffed her feathers. She settled in for the night. But the back of the box was lonely. The shadows on the wall wavered in the moonlight. They made funny shapes. The branches outside the box slithered along the sides. They made funny noises. Fidget slept fitfully for the rest of the night. So she was a, having a hard time being alone in the box without her brother. So that's her in the moonlight and her looking at the birds. All right. Fidget's eyes flew open. Was it morning yet? She looked around the inside of her box. Where was Echo? She leapt to the ledge and peered down. He wasn't on the rocky shelf anymore. Fidget left the ledge and coursed the pattern of the river. Her keen eye searched for her brother as they panned the rugged canyon walls. She continued on her path until darkness closed in. It was too late to go back to the box. So like we talked about before, she used that incredible eyesight to look for her brother, but she, there was no luck. She couldn't find him. Fidget found a nook in a cliff and tucked herself in, but she couldn't get comfortable. She missed the fluttering of leaves against her old box. She missed its reassuring walls, but most of all, she missed Echo. Hopefully she reunites with her brother. First light glimmered. Fidget was hungry. For the first time in her life, there was no food to eat. She would have to get back to the box. The sun brightened the canyon. Fidget headed for home, but the plants, animals, and trees didn't look right. Nothing looked right. Cack, 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 Fidget cried mournfully. Cack, 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 emptily echoed back. So she's still on the hunt for her brother. She's getting hungry because she's used to the food that she had back in her box. We'll see what happens next. Fidget's tummy felt hollow as she landed on a new branch. Her wings drooped heavily as she stared vacantly into the still afternoon. The shadows grew long again. Fidget pulled herself in closely to stay warm against the nip of the night. Light broke early. Fidget's insides gnawed. So Fidget is getting hungry. She's still on the lookout. Let's see what happens next. A high-pitched whistling noise reached Fidget's ears from afar. She swung her head. A small torpedo-shaped bird flew into the canyon. The sun glinted off his brown feathered helmet. Cack, 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 thundered and echoed across the canyon. Fidget bobbed her head in excitement. Cack, 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 she bellowed back. So there is a bird approaching. It was Echo. Echo landed beside her. He had something in his foot. It was a little bird. Fidget stepped in for a closer look, but Echo turned his back. He fanned his wings and tail as he leaned over his meal and took a bite. Fidget felt a spark ignite. If Echo could get his own food, then she could too. So there's Echo down there and Fidget looking at him up top. Echo launched himself into the air and Fidget followed.
And these pictures are beautiful. It looks like a real life peregrine falcon. Things started to look right. Why, she knew that rock, she knew that plant, she knew that animal, and she knew that tree. So now Fidget's heading back home and things start to look familiar to her. There was the box. Echo banked off towards a branch as Fidget flew to the delicious meal that was waiting for her. She ferociously gobbled it down. So some humans left the food there for the bird to eat. But now she has to learn to find her own food. In the morning, Echo was gone. Fidget knew that he no longer needed the box. A flock of little birds flew by. One was flying awkwardly. Fidget's eyes remained on it as a thought flickered in her mind, then flamed. As it grew brighter, Fidget launched herself in the air. She climbed in circles until she was a speck in the sky. There's all the little birds. And Fidget's got her eye on them especially this one. Fidget focused, she found the little bird. Without wavering her gaze, she folded her wings and careened towards the earth. In seconds, she had the bird in her talons. Success. She swooped up to an outcropping to enjoy her meal. Fidget's eyes deepened with understanding. She was now truly a master of the sky. Summer's heat turned to chill. The amber leaves were dropping from the trees. Fidget felt the pull of the south. Many birds were heading that way. One by one, flock by flock, they left her valley. Fidget watched them go. Soon she would join them. The valley would become another place, another time. So she's seeing all these birds heading out for migration, just like they would be this time of year. And she is going to join them soon. The dawn rose bright and clear. The light filled the nooks and the crannies glowed. Fidget knew that it was time to go. The longing for grasslands and plains thundered through her veins. Fidget sent her course on an ancient avian flyway. She lifted her wings and looked around. All was clear. Fidget beat her wings to the call of time. With the last glance at her branch and the box, Fidget left her valley behind. So now that she's a master of the sky, she doesn't need her box anymore. And she's hitting the road, heading south for the winter. So that was the end of our story, but let's see what happens after. So another summer had passed. Two young peregrine falcons made it through their first hurdles of becoming wild independent beings. That was Fidget and Echo. They could fly, escape predators, and hunt for food on their own. The hack site attendants jobs were done. They packed up their clothes, camping equipment, and tents and made the long trek home. Fidget and Echo followed the little birds to their wintering grounds in Central America. With luck and skill, they would make the long migration back the following spring. The Hacksite attendants would be back as well with more young peregrine falcons. And down here it says, in 1999, the peregrine falcon was removed from the federal endangered species list. Today, there are thousands of peregrines on the wing. The pioneers prevailed. The peregrines are back. All right. So that was an amazing story because these birds, um, the populations used to be really low and they were really struggling. And with the help of humans learning about that chemical DDT, they knew that they had to do something. So they banned that chemical and then the birds could now grow healthy and strong and these birds have amazing instincts and they know when it's time to fly south for the winter. And just like Fidget and Echo, they learn to fly and hunt for food. So what an amazing story. 
So before we go today, we have one last activity. Um, Andrea is going to join us and walk us through our Peregrine Falcon craft um, with just a few simple steps and I will pass it off to her. So, welcome Andrea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was an amazing story. So I'm going to teach you how to make a Peregrine Falcon craft with just a roll of toilet paper. Well, without the toilet paper. So first, it'll look like this when you're done. So here I have one that I made. There is a toilet paper roll here. And all you need for this whole craft is your toilet paper roll, construction paper or paint, um, some googly eyes, a scissors, and some glue. <clears throat> so to begin, you want to either paint your roll or cover it with your construction paper. I covered it with construction paper. And then on other sheets of construction paper, you're going to need to either trace or freehand draw wings, tail, a head with a beak, and some feet for the little bottom. And then you're going to have to cut them out with some scissors. And then you just glue it all together. So I glued on this construction paper over the uh, toilet paper roll. And then I glued on the wings. And then I glued on the tail. Then the head, beak, googly eyes, and the feet. And then finally, because peregrine falcons have some markings, I put some banded markings on the tail to reflect a real peregrine falcon. And then on the face, falcons, as you saw in Fidget's Folly, they have some uh, mask markings on their eyes. And then finally, just because I wanted to, I colored in little talons that you can't really see. But that's our craft. And you could also use it as a puppet so you can put your fingers into the tube and it flaps just like a real bird does. So yeah. And Jamie, if you wanna take it away for closing. Thank you, Andrea, that was so cool. I can't wait to make that Peregrine Falcon craft with my daughter, so thank you so much. And Riley, thank you, you did such a great job reading Fidget's Folly, I love the story. So also, friends in the audience, we, when we emailed out the link for this program, we also emailed out this coloring sheet of a Peregrine Falcon. So you're welcome to print it out and color it at home. And on the back of it, there's also all these really interesting facts about peregrine falcons. So have fun coloring that. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you had fun. We certainly had fun. And don't forget, our next Sanctuary Storytime is on Thursday, October 22nd at 11 o'clock a.m. And we are going to read the book Stella Luna. And do you know what Stella Luna is? What's Stella Luna? Stella Luna is a bat. So that will be a really fun one. And I hope everyone has a great day. It's migration season. Keep your eyes to the skies and maybe you can see a peregrine falcon diving down to catch its prey. So thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye everyone. Bye. We hope to see you soon. <laughs>